do you talk to people? Milton Erickson had a wonderful concept. I want to read a quote to you from him. Every person's map of the world is unique as their thumbprint. There are no two types of people alike. No, people, no two people understand the same sentence in the same way. So in dealing with people, you try not to fit them to the concept of what they should be. And what he's trying to say is we all have a history. We all have thoughts. We all have rules of how the world works. We all have beliefs on how things are and how we believe and see ourselves. All of this creates a map of what we call the world. But the map is not the world. We don't see the world as it truly is. We see things on our rule sets, our beliefs, our identities. So when we're trying to communicate, all the stuff is filtered going out, and then the other person receives it, filters it all the way coming back in. So it's truly a miracle that we can actually communicate at all because we have so diverse belief structures and identities and rule sets of how the world is and works that we kind of interpret everything a little bit different. Let me show you an example. Think of a dog. What dog did you think of? Was it black? Was it brown? Was it a Labrador, the most common dog in America? Or was it something totally different? But you probably had a very specific dog in mind. So when I say the word dog, it could mean almost anything to every single different person because we all have an experience with a dog at some point in our lives. And if there's a significance to one of those in particular, you probably thought of that one. Same thing with people. If they've had a prior experience that maybe was either traumatic or very energetic, they're probably thinking of that moment in time and that filters or changes what they're interacting or how they're interacting with you. So remember that next time you have a conversation with somebody, be, uh, be empathetic to them because what they're experiencing and what they're saying, even though it may be potentially not so nice, it's because of their past experiences. So if you meet that with empathy, if you meet that with understanding, and don't take it upon yourself. So a gift is, interestingly enough, not something you have to accept. So when somebody throws anger at you, you can just say, I don't accept that gift of anger, which then frees you up to meet them with empathy. And when you can do that, you can totally dramatically change somebody's life. Because then you're like, what is your need? What are you actually trying to say to me? I don't think you're actually trying to hurt me, but you're in pain, you're in suffering. So let's change that around. What do you need to overcome that? And that drastically changes the conversation. Because if you can meet somebody's need, not only will they become more friendly, possibly even a friend, business partner, a mentor, but you can radically change the lives that they meet down the road as well. And that's kind of why I love subconscious coaching. You see, it's like having this superpower where we have the ability to help others because we can see the patterns in the way they're acting and the way their pain is. And once you identify that, you can totally change somebody's life. So if you're interested in learning more about what I do or interested in maybe a free session, I would love to work with you. Send me a message and start creating the life you deserve. Otherwise, have a wonderful evening.